Hello there and welcome to this special episode of Brian Lomax Movie Talk where, to celebrate the release of American Sniper, I'm going to be counting down my top 10 Clint Eastwood directed movies. Clint Eastwood is one of my favourite directors and I like the, the simplicity of his style. He doesn't overcomplicate things. Um, he, he lets the actors essentially do what they do best and he, he doesn't feel the need to kind of move the camera around all over the place and he doesn't use like MTV style cutting or anything like that. He's he's not a, a showman in that regard when it, when it comes to the style of his directing. Um, but I think that his style really lends itself to great scripts and great performances. Uh, he just, he points and shoots essentially. Um, and, uh, and that's really what I like about him as a director. So I haven't seen American Sniper yet, so it doesn't appear on this list. So please no comments with regards to why I've not put it on there. Um, I'm I'm doing this list because of the release of American Sniper, which I do hope to see sometime this week, actually. So uh, look out for my review later on for that. Um, but because I'm a fan of Clint Eastwood, I've been a fan of his work for a long time, I just thought that before seeing American Sniper, I'd uh, kind of review his, his, his back catalogue, so to speak. So here's my top 10. Number 10, High Plains Drifter. Eastwood not only directs this film, but stars in it as well, as a, as a man with no name, really. He's, he's referred to in the credits as The Stranger. Um, and it really does play into the, the perception that this guy might not actually be human. He's, he's almost like an angel of death. He's, he's, he's kind of, if you like, sent on a mission from God to, to judge this town for its sins. Um, all the people in this town are, are complicit in a crime and Eastwood's character comes in, judges them, deals out this this wrath, and and then just leaves. Um, and it, it's it's a real simple, well told, um, and and quite disturbing tale, uh, but certainly one of Eastwood's best. Number nine, play Misty for me. Again, Eastwood directs and stars in this, um, as he does in, in a lot of films on this list, actually. Um, he plays a, a radio disc jockey who has a one-night stand with this woman called Evelyn, um, who actually turns out to be, long before Fatal Attraction came along, a bit of a bunny boiler. She, she stalks him and becomes very obsessive and then actually resorts to very violent means. Um, and like I say, to, to see a film like this that, that did come over a full decade before Fatal Attraction um, is is really quite something and in the hands of Eastwood um, it, it's really expertly made. Number eight, The Bridges of Madison County. This film is quite a slow film, it's quite a plodding film in, in many respects, it's just the relationship between Eastwood's character and the character played by Meryl Streep is just so much time is, is taken developing it that you, you just you get sucked into them, even though you don't necessarily always agree with some of the actions that these characters take. Um, they're essentially ha well, they're having an affair, and well, I can't get on board with um, some of, with those decisions, so to speak. You still get pulled into to what these characters are going through, what they're feeling, and um, it's again, it's it's down to the expert handling of Eastwood. Um, he's he's not interested in 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 kind of big bombastic camera movements he's interested in in character and and this this film is is, is all about character it focuses on, on two characters throughout and it's it's really well made number seven letters from iwo jima so this film is the the companion piece if you will to flags of our fathers flags of our fathers told the the story of the battle on iwo jima um, from from the american side and this film letters from iwo jima tells it from the japanese side um, but this is something that I, I off the top of my head can't think has been done before in which um the, one filmmaker has has looked at a a, a particular particular um, historical event and and then told two films um, from the opposing sides one one from the American side and one from the Japanese side um, and this film for me um, is is better than Flags of Our Fathers I felt Flags of Our Fathers kind of it, it was too hung up on the the patriotic aspect um, and and this film I, I think really has the edge because it 
it delves into into what the the characters on the other side were going through they they knew death was coming they knew that the end was near victory wasn't at hand um and and we get into their mindset what what does that mean for people in that situation um a, a really great war film and and one of the best war films in recent years number six true crime in this film, Eastwood plays a reporter who is struggling to to hold on to his family. He's, he's kind of having to look after his kid, um, but not really doing a very good job of it. Um, at one point, we get a really funny scene in which um, his, his child kind of hurts themselves because he's not paying attention to what's going on uh, and it shouldn't we shouldn't laugh but it, it is funny um just just because of the way that eastwood handles it um but i feel that this is one of eastwood's most underrated films as a director um other than maybe a, a final uh, scene towards the end in which we kind of unnecessarily get the race against time kind of amped up a little bit um other than that the rest of the film is it's really a good story about this man who is really a pathetic example of a human being but who is trying to do something right who's trying to to do something noble um and, and get this this man who is on death row who is innocent off and and try to save his life Number five, Million Dollar Baby. So this film won Hilary Swank a Best Actress Oscar, and it's not hard to see why. Her performance here is absolutely brilliant. She really commits herself to the role. The film has a rather downbeat ending, which um, is, is quite a ballsy move to have, particularly with a, a Hollywood film. Um, but it, it really pays off, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that Eastwood has the courage to commit to this ending. Um, but the film throughout is just is really gripping. It's a really great character piece. And when the three leads are all on screen together, Swank, uh, Eastwood and Morgan Freeman, um, there's some really great character interplay between them. Um, and and the, the story just sucks you in. This 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 story of this woman who who goes into boxing and, and feels like she has something to fight for and and you get sucked into her character and that's really down to to swank's performance and eastwood's direction number four mystic river there are so many great performances in this film that it's really hard to count uh tim robbins is, is quite underrated i feel i think a lot of people talk about sean penn a lot of people talk about laura linney who are fantastic um but i i think it it kind of sells what tim robbins does in this film a little short um that being said everyone is fantastic sean penn is great in this laura linney is absolutely fantastic so twisted in this role she's kind of this um she, she's the matriarch really she's she uh, she kind of has sean penn's character twisted around her little finger and she's she's really in charge of of, of what's going on when when penn's character does some really nasty things it's really her who's who's kind of dictating what should be done um and just this the, the story of, of 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 just the heartache of having a child snatched and and what some of these people go through what robin's character goes through you feel for all these characters and even when characters do bad things you understand it you understand why they go to such dark places and this really is a great film that gets you thinking number three changeling so this film kind of revisits some of the themes that were brought up in mystic river only in this one it's it's more about the strength of a mother it's, it's about her strength to continue and to to really not settle for for the lies that and and, and the the kind of incompetence of the police that are, are looking for her her child um who who tell her that they have found her child um and it's it's there's a real absolutely stunning performance here from angelina jolie eastwood seems to have a habit of, of getting the best out of his actors jolie is a is a great actress anyway but this, this is one of her finest performances and it's it's based on a true story as well and some of the elements that happen in this story uh, the script is by uh, j michael straczynski uh, creator of babylon 5 no less um it, it's just, some of the elements are just when you're watching it, it it's hard to believe that this is actually true it's hard to believe that what transpires throughout this film actually happened um but as is often the case truth is is a lot more 
bizarre than fiction and this is a really gripping story from start to finish. Number two, Unforgiven. This film won Best Picture at the Oscars and it's really deserving of that accolade. Uh, the relationships here between Eastwood and Morgan Freeman's character um, I, I just are really spot on. You, you, they, they play these kind of old, weary, withered men who, who have a, a real loving, brotherly kind of relationship and, and you really buy into it. So when one of these characters um, is, is killed halfway through by Hackman's character, um, the, it's, it's a real stab to the heart. And Hackman does play one of the most truly despicable villains um, for, from any Western film that I've ever seen. Um, so I really love the performances. I really love the writing. The script for this is fantastic. Eastwood sat on it for over a decade until he was ready to play the role. It's obvious that he, he's he got a love for the material. It comes through in every shot. The, the cinematography is stunning, absolutely beautiful. Um, and just the attention to detail that Eastwood pays and, and to the relationships, to the performances that he gets out of the other actors. From a historical standpoint, it does fit in with a, a lot of the old westerns that Eastwood used to do. This character, Bill Mooney, that he plays could very easily be one of those characters much later in life. Um, he could be the stranger from High Plains Drifter, in fact, um, and, and this is where we find him in his later years. Um, so it's that aspect as well kind of gives the film a, an added poignancy that maybe we wouldn't get if another actor had taken on the role. And finally, my number one Clint Eastwood directed movie is Gran Torino. This film is just so much fun from start to finish. It is engaging on a, on a story and character level. It's funny. Um, it's just, we, we find this, this character played by Eastwood who is just, he's a racist and he, it's just, we shouldn't like him. There's some of the things he comes out with, he just, he's a lovable rogue and he's, he's, he's a despicable human being, but we can't help but love him. And when this family, uh, this Asian family moves in next door to him, he slowly over the course of this film just starts to warm to them. And you know, there's nothing new here that we haven't seen elsewhere. This, this story has been told many times before you get two different uh, people from two very different cultures who necessarily don't understand each other and, and, and are like each other um, but you stick them together and over the course of the film they warm to each other they grow to love each other they grow to respect each other and that's what we get here really but again it's the handling by Eastwood as a director uh, the way he, he just he takes his time he's he's quite happy to take a slow pace and he's more than anything concerned with character development something that is sorely lacking in a lot of Hollywood films uh, and this this film has character development in spades and just characters that that we love as well um the the, the two the two child actors um or the, the teenagers but I can't remember their names, but they're absolutely fantastic. The the actress who, who plays the, the, the girl in this, she she's amazing. She really gives an outstanding performance. Um, and and I just love the characters. You you really sympathize with the predicaments that, that they face throughout this film. And it it makes you get on board with um, the character the, 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 the character played by Eastwood, um, his actions towards the end of this film. You you really want him to, to do what it is that you think he's going to do. Um, and there's a nice surprise towards the end, a little bit of a twist there, but it's just every element in this film is handled really brilliantly by Eastwood. Uh, it's, it's a really great character piece and it really plays into a lot of Eastwood's earlier films from a character standpoint. And I just love it. I can watch it again and again and I highly recommend it. So that's my top 10 Clint Eastwood directed movies. Tell me what your favourite are. Um, do they appear on this list? Of our, or have I left off your favourite movie from this list? Comment below and let me know your favourites. And until next time, thanks for watching. When they're on screen together, just the... Uh, uh, uh.